tired of it all, gentlemen? Sick of the rush and regulations? Weary of the roar of airplane engines and the smell of gasoline? Maybe you'll dream of a spot where, as far as the eye can see, there's nothing but beauty and fragrance and peace. And you've all the time in the world. Time for living. Time for long, pleasant chats with people who are nice and friendly. If you've ever had such a dream, then here in the gentle quiet of a tranquil countryside is the haven just built for you. Yes, here you may talk to your heart's content. And the more you talk, the longer you stay. This is Dulag Luft. Transient prison camp dedicated to the proposition that all men can be made to talk. Light up on Dulag Luft. German interrogation station for captured American air crews. I told you before, you will not talk. That's right, Sergeant. We will not talk. Sergeant, I hope you get this man to a hospital right away. He's in pretty bad shape. How about yourself, Captain? You don't look so good either. You both get attention when it's been ordered, not before. You'll be okay, Ralph. They won't start on medical treatment. All right. We'll all be okay. Just keep on your toes and don't be scared. There's nothing to be afraid of. Yes, sir. Achtung! We're going to the building now. Then you wait for instructions from me. Hey! Jump! Come on, Smash! Your name, your rank, your serial number. And that's all. Got it? Diese Gefangenen, die, uh, die sind gestern Nacht Mittag abgeschossen worden, nicht wahr? Ja. Bei unserer Luftabwehr. Wir haben... It would do us no harm to unpack our English, Captain. The practice might come in handy. Yes. The plane crashed yesterday afternoon, here, in northern Italy. A B-99. Apparently on a single plane sortie against our communication lines. Bombs were jettisoned, and the crew did a remarkably fine job of destroying the plane. As well as all the equipment. What about personal papers, Major? Letters, labels, clothes? Not a scrap. The prisoners, of course, were given a routine interrogation near where they were captured. Name, rank, serial number. That's all we could get from them. They're, um, they're based here. You learned nothing as to where they came from? Nothing whatever. Our guests, I'm afraid, are thoroughly security conscious. And uh, you may be sure that not one of them has any complete information concerning future activities against us. Not one of them. Seems rather unlikely, sir. Not at all. Air crews are usually kept in the dark about future plans. That's to prevent them from giving vital facts to the enemy in event of capture. We know nothing. They know nothing. Rather hopeless start, eh? I don't see how I shall learn very much about interrogation from a situation like this, Major. On the contrary, Captain. Here. Let me show you. A news clipping, taken from an American newspaper we receive regularly through neutral channels. You see, Captain, everything pertaining to the American Air Force is clipped, filed away for possible use. Frank L. Williams. Father of Lieutenant Williams, who happens to be one of our prisoners. Now observe what we learn. First, Lieutenant Williams is from Boston. Next, he comes from a fairly wealthy family. And his father, as you see, has a rather special hatred for the Nazi party. Valuable information, my friend. It gives us a head start. And there are other ways, Captain. You have noticed, of course, that our prisoners number only five. A B-99 usually carries six. Who is missing? The bombardier? Quite possible. Harang? Why carry a bombardier if the pilot himself is going to drop the bombs? He undoubtedly would, you know, on a low-level mission. A low-level mission? 
That is a possible lead. Yes? Prisoners are in the receiving room, sir. They are anything? Nothing, sir. They seem very much on guard. The boy who's frightened, also the one who's wounded. Oh, yes, the wounded one. Have him placed in the hospital at once. Yes, sir. And uh, what about the others? The pilot commander, Captain Spencer. I would classify him as the highly intelligent type, sir. Well poised. The co-pilot, Lieutenant Williams, also intelligent, but uh, more easygoing, inclined to talk. And Mason, technical sergeant, not quite so clever as he thinks. Quite devoted, I would say, to his pilot commander. Very good. You will segregate them at once. Officers in the West Wing, of course. Yes, sir. And I think uh, Captain Spencer. Waiting will bother him least of all. I might as well see him first. I shan't need you for this evening. Sergeant. This frightened boy. Place him in the East Wing. Solitary confinement. A little harsh treatment might do him well. Yes, sir. Why not frighten one of the others? Why, a man who's already frightened. That much simpler to soften him up. You see, Captain, each man is a different type, with a different kind of uh, chink in his armor. Once we know that chink, we know how to split that armor, and so reach the man himself. Hey, my dad's a This man is wounded. He needs medical attention. He's been taken to the hospital now. OK, kid, you got nothing to worry about. Father, in the love of Sierra, Simmons takes and dicey. There's nothing wrong with Cooper, Sergeant. Where are you taking him? To his quarters, Captain. The Major's waiting to see you. This way. Father, in my life, the boy the rest him out. Oh. Well, there's one good thing. None of us knows from nothing. This way, Lieutenant. I got it all figured out, you know. Who's going to be the first one to crack? No, oh, the Major. How long can a guy listen to nothing but serial numbers? <laughs> Well, I guess we'll have to dig something up for him. Crew. From your same base, I believe. 
Corsica, isn't it? My name, sir, is James N. Spencer. My rank is captain. My serial number is 0794194. I see you misunderstand me, captain. You are not being cross-examined. That was done near the place of your capture. As a matter of fact, we wish your stay here to be as pleasant as under the circumstances it can be. I dare say that surprises you. Yes, I dare say it does, Major. This is simply a formality. Naturally, you, there are certain things you must know, necessary rules of conduct and so on, but uh, let me assure you I have no plans that do not conform with the rules of the Geneva Convention. You are familiar with the Geneva Convention? Well, in a general way, yes, sir. It deals with the treatment of prisoners, I believe. Yes, ensures their protection. Excuse me. Yeah, all right. Oh, how more? I beg your pardon, Major. I understand the American Air Crew men have arrived. When may I see them? Their commander happens to be right here, Hamawa. You might as well get his papers in order now. How are you, sir? Glad to see you all right. Thank you, sir. We were very lucky. Please sit down. The regular form for all American prisoners of war, Captain. If you borrow your pen, Major. Go ahead. This form, of course, is sent to a neutral Red Cross headquarters, then forwarded to the American branch. It's acted upon there. There we are. The other items, Captain, you haven't finished. Haven't finished? Oh, yes. Name, rank, serial number. Uh, but don't you see, you write your base address here, your unit number, your... Uh, amnesia, Herr Maurer. It's very bad. All I seem to remember is my name, my rank, my serial number. Aren't you being unduly suspicious, Captain? Those items merely see to it that you receive your mail properly and that your parents and uh, your base are informed you are safe. Well, that's, that's very odd, sir. Because according to the Geneva Convention, just my name, my rank, and my serial number will take care of that. To tell you the truth, I've never seen a form quite like that before. Captain, that form is the only one my Red Cross office has ever used. Well, I suppose it all depends on what Red Cross you're working for. Captain, I'm afraid you are what we call the uncooperative type of prisoner. I'm sorry to hear that, sir. What would you say if I told you that we already know what your base and your unit number are? Then, sir, I would tell you that my name is James N. Spencer, my rank is Captain, my serial number is... Very well, Captain. I know it thoroughly. Right, sir. I think that will be all. Yes, sir. Take Captain Spencer to his quarters. Yes, sir. Hardly the ideal interrogation subject, eh, Major? The man was superb, as far as the American Air Force is concerned. I only hope our own pilots conduct themselves as well. Tell me, sir, suppose every one of these men is as alert as Spencer. Then I should have wasted my time. Do you really think that they'll tell us where they came from and what kind of a mission they were on? There are other things just as important, Captain. Matters, for example, which may be of great propaganda value for us. Facts about civilian morale in America. A word about economic conditions there. I'll tell you this. If those men will talk at all, and they will, our time will not have been wasted. Just as there is no such thing as an innocent question, there is no such thing as a valueless statement. Come in. What a joint. You're Lieutenant Williams, aren't you? Yeah. I'm Captain Rooney, Lieutenant. I just wanted to check on your hand. Give you any trouble? Nothing serious, Captain. Only a slight burn. Yeah, from the plane. I understand you boys did a fine job on that. Hardly a scrap left. We did the very best we could. Good for you. Look, uh, the Navy's going to have to see you sooner or later. You might as well make it now. Cigarette? That's what they give a man about to face a firing squad. Is the Major as bad as that? <laughs> You've been seeing too many movies. Don't worry about the Major or the cigarettes either. Go on, they're not poison. American. 
A very thoughtful touch, Captain. One of the smartest things I ever did, starting up with these things. I practically grew up on them, you know. Come on, I'll take you over. You can do a little sightseeing on the way. You practically grew up on the American language, too, didn't you? You're pretty good. Coming from a New Englander, I consider that a compliment. Boston, isn't it? <laughs> Nothing mysterious about it. That's one accent you can't miss. You want to hear Cole? Cole? Get the hospital. He's from the South. Got a drone a mile long. Oh, he has. Where's he from? Alabama? Atlanta, Georgia. Bobby Jones, hometown. Great place. You lived in America. I lived in America all my life. Till the war, that is. And then you came over to fight her, is that it? I was here visiting my sister when Germany went to war. I was interned. I could speak German and I knew America. They thought I might be useful. Do you think I like it being tied up with a bunch of heels? Living with them, working with them? Well, what else could I do? It was either this or concentration camp, or worse. Well, you wouldn't understand. I don't expect you to. Sure, I understand. This was the easy way out. It was the best way out. You see, I found I could be useful. To our prisoners, if no one else. Oh, Lieutenant, excuse me a moment. I'd better let my assistant know where he can reach me.
Did you hurt you much? Uh-uh. It's okay now. He has no feelings, that man. I think he suspects how I feel about Americans and the Nazis. I'm to be disciplined, he says, for my insolence. Gosh, ma'am, you shouldn't have said nothing, not in my account. Please do not think about it. I'm sure it is all right. Oh, I almost forgot. You must fill out your Red Cross form. How shall I? Red Cross form? The usual form for all prisoners of war. It simply ensures you receiving your mail and sees to it your parents are notified you're safe. Here, <coughs> I'll show you. Now your name, Ralph? Ann. Cole, the rank sergeant. And your serial number? One four. One six one. O nine five. O nine five. And your unit? Nine. My unit? What well, is that all right to give? Oh yes. That's the regular part of the form, Ralph. Here. Here are forms filled out by some of the other boys here. Rank, serial number, unit, mid base. Okay. It's the 950th medium bombardment group. And the base? A fighter base, Naples, Italy. Naples, Italy. Mm -hmm. Fine, Ralph. And now I think you better have some sleep. Quite sure you're comfortable. Comfortable? Say, listen, for the past three weeks, I've been living in one tent with nine other guys. That ought to give you some idea. One tent, yes. That surprises me. I always thought the American Air Force had far better accommodation for its men in Germany. Well, they do. It's just that we sort of moved into Naples in a hurry. They weren't set up for us yet. But before that, it was not so bad? <laughs> That's right. Back in Tunisia, there was only six to a tent. Oh, I see. That was luxury, no? <laughs> That was living. But this, baby, this is dreaming. The fact is, Lieutenant, we simply don't bother with interrogation anymore. And I think you can understand why. The men interrogated, the prisoners of war, how much do they themselves really know about what's going on? Uh, excuse me. Major von Ben speaking. Yes? From Tunisia, Major. As you know, that particular field at Naples is a fighter base. Now, why should they suddenly transfer an entire medium bomber group there? It was quite sudden. The accommodation were most inadequate. Was that, sir? How long have they been there? Three weeks. Three weeks? Oh, I'll be glad to join you. Tonight, then. Goodbye, sir. As I was saying, Lieutenant, I know that we don't advise our flyers as to what our plans are. And I don't imagine your Air Force does either. Oh, I don't know, Major. The American flyer is a pretty well-informed guy. I am perfectly well, in fact, I assure you. But the point I'm making is this. We don't feel he has enough uh, strategic information to justify a formal interrogation. We rely on outside reports, military intelligence, and we keep closely up to date. Your own organization, for instance, the 950th Bombardment Group. Let's see. Here we are. Based in Tunisia until three weeks ago and now in Naples. Mm-hmm. You see? Quite current. Just a minute, Major. How did you know that we were in the 950th? Oh, your commander, Captain Spencer, was telling me about the organization and some of your experiences. Well, <laughs> we've had plenty of them, sir. I'd like to hear about them sometime, Lieutenant. From all I can gather, when one flies a B-99, one just naturally has experiences. It's a terrific ship, all right. I'm sure it is. I must admit, however, it's your heavy bomber that we really worry about. Uh, then you've never seen a B-99 in action, Major. That's all I can say. Do you remember the Strauss line raid? The factory? How could we forget it? But when heavy bombers used on that mission? That's right. 
And some of the boys who were on it just came into our outfit. Never flew mediums before. Do you know what they say? If they'd had 99s at Strassline, they could have done twice the job. Really? But your B-99s could never have carried as many bombs. It doesn't matter, Major. What you want on a raid like that is plenty of speed. The factory was well fortified, so you want to come in fast, give them plenty of surprise. Then, too, it was in a congested part of the city, and the lower you are, the better you can pick out your target. Oh, now, if there's a better plane for that kind of low-level bombing, I'd like to know what it is. Very well, Lieutenant. I'm convinced. Another, Lieutenant? No more, sir. Not on an empty stomach. Oh, how thoughtless of me. You must be famished. Reening, I think you should take care of that without any further delay. Yes, indeed, sir. Suppose we lunch together, Lieutenant. Sounds good to me. Well, thanks for the drinks, Major. And don't underrate that B-99. Indeed, I won't. Perhaps we should make some copies of it. That's a very good idea, sir. Sorry I can't give you any help. Goodbye, Major. Well, sir. Sorry I can't give you any help. <laughs> Idiot. Let's hope our own pilots don't conduct themselves like left one. Bring in Sergeant Mason. Right away, sir. It was much better, eh, Major? We are making progress. Three weeks ago, and rather suddenly, an entire group of medium bombers moved into a fighter field. What does that suggest to you? Well, that they were needed for a special kind of mission, something only they could do. Exactly. The B-99, you know, has a limited range. Certain targets, which could not be struck from North Africa, could be struck from Naples. But which targets? Within medium bomber range of Naples, there must be thousands of bombing targets. Oh, no. Not thousands, not for low-level missions. And that's what they are concentrating on now. Why, Captain? They've even experts along. Specialists in low-level bombing attack. The Strassland flyers? Yes, an industrial target in a crowded area. We'll see if Sergeant Mason can tell us about that. I'd better notify the men, don't you think, Major? We might not need them, of course. It all depends on the sergeant and how clever he feels he is. Well, I'll leave you plenty of time, anyway. Excuse me, sir. Sergeant Mason, sir. Over here, sergeant. Now, your name I see is Alfred Mason. No middle initial? No, sir. Technical sergeant? Yes, sir. Your unit number? The name of your organization, Sergeant. It's a perfectly proper question. Oh, yes, sir. It's the 16th Bombardment Group. And your base? Palermo, Sicily. Mm -hmm. By the time you boys of the 16th have been having, huh? Yes, sir, we've been pretty busy, Major. And uh, no doubt you'll regret missing out on all the future operations. Yeah, sure will. You have big things in store for us, eh? <laughs> well, I, I wouldn't like to talk about that, sir. Naturally, naturally. But uh, you may be sure that I shall advise a general strengthening of the defenses in uh, northern Italy. Well, I don't know where you got it, sir, but, uh... Induction, Sergeant. I know those B-99s of yours were primarily built for a short-range mission. That's right, sir. And, uh, for certain types of targets, say, uh, airdromes. Yeah, airdromes and, uh, ammunition dumps. So you know that, too, huh? Yes. Yes. And I know what a fool you are. How dare you come in here and try to deceive a German officer? The 16th Bombardment Group, Palermo, Sicily. Do you think we are so stupid we don't know that you're from the 950th? Naples, and that you came there three weeks ago from Tunisia? Well, that's, that's not true, sir. We, we don't stand there and contradict me. Everything you've said is lies. Everything. We know all about the missions you're planning. All about the extra fuel tanks in your planes. <laughs> oh, silly planes of yours. What can you hope to accomplish with those absurd bombers, those B-99? You'll have a chance to find that out, Major. Yes, and perhaps a chance to witness the extraordinary speed. 300 miles an hour. Not 300, 306. 60! How fantastic! How typical of your boasting! Your whole Air Force is 
twice as stupid a liar as you are. You'll see how stupid we are. We're gonna blast you off the map. Did you know that? And we're getting set for it right now. You'll find out. Yes. Yes. I have every intention of finding out. So your group is getting set for an important mission, isn't it? No, no, I didn't mean that. We were, I was... Uh, you are going to tell me what they are going to bomb. What and when? But I don't know. I was only talking about... Let me advise you, Sergeant. It will be better to tell me. Now, look. I don't have to tell you a thing except my name and rank and serial number. And there's nothing you can do to make me. I happen to know the rules on that, so you just keep those threats for somebody else. Threats? You are going to... Yes, what is it? Come you on. I, I simply wanted to inform you, sir, the men are ready. Shall they go on? Yes, certainly go on. You are going to... Wait a minute. Threats. Sergeant? Do you know what happens if a prisoner is seen making an escape? That's right. He's fired at. Shot while attempting escape, it's usually called. And it's perfectly in keeping with all your rules. That's what your Captain Spence is about to do. He's about to make a getaway. What do you mean? Let me put it this way. He's about to be shot while attempting escape. Huh. If you think I'm gonna fall for that, you're... Captain Spencer decided he wouldn't talk either. Your Lieutenant Williams was much more sensible. You're lying. It just occurred to me, Sergeant. Perhaps we can arrange a bargain. Your commander's life in exchange for a few words. Just the facts about the mission. Well? Go on. Go on with your bluff. That's all it is, a bluff. You have heard the Sergeant Captain. Have him proceed. Yes, sir. It's a bluff. How does it feel, Mason, to have a friend's life right in your grasp? Tell us what we want to know, your commander will live. If you don't, you kill him. That's right. You kill him. As surely as if you were one of the men out there pulling the trigger. Ah, this is a gag. Think, Mason. Think how little it takes to keep that man alive. Your information about that mission, that's all. And what harm will it do? The plans are already underway. We can't stop them. Ask yourself, would he tell us those few words if he knew it would save your life? You know he would. Be reasonable, Mason. Don't be a fool. your group is making. What are they? That just it, I don't know. It was only a guess. What? No, 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 wait a minute. I meant, I meant that I was only going by the way it looked. You see, right after the mission we were on, everybody was to have a layoff. That never happened before. The whole group at once, I mean. And all the planes were gonna be checked over. I just figured they were getting set for something big, that's all. How long a layoff was it supposed to be? When were the planes to be ready? In, in two days, tomorrow morning. Tomorrow morning? Where? What's the target? I don't know. Don't lie to me. You do know. What is the target? I tell you, I don't know. You've got to believe me. How could I know? They don't tell us where we're going to bomb. You know they don't. Wache. <laughs> the next 
next time I'll ask you for the truth, you will give it. After I told you. You said you wouldn't shoot them as my talk and you did. You killed him! You murdered him! You did very well, Captain. We can make an intelligence officer out of you yet. He was an interesting subject to work on, sir. Interesting is hardly the word, my friend. By his lies and his boasting, he gave us our most important piece of information. That group raid tomorrow. Their biggest mission to date. But where and what are they going to bomb? That's the problem. Not such a problem as you think, Captain. They will leave from here, from Naples. And they will go well, it's safe to say that B-99s can't penetrate further than 1,000 kilometers from their base. That's with the extra fuel tanks. Extra fuel tanks? How did you learn about those, sir? Mason told me. Or oh, uh, his expression did. I made a stab and it stuck. There was another stab you missed. I suggested that his group was planning only short-range missions. And uh, he assured me that I'd made a remarkable discovery. A very poor liar, that boy. So, a long-range mission, then, that will carry their planes at least this far. You're basing it entirely on the sergeant's lies, sir. On common sense. When you add extra tanks to a plane, you use up weight for bombs. Is that correct? Right. So in order to justify the loss in bombs, they obviously intend to use those tanks. To travel, in other words, at least 650 kilometers from their base. I see. They'll travel at least this far, not any further than here. And somewhere in this area in between lies their target for tomorrow. Hmm. But it could be anywhere of 500. Fortunately, you're quite mistaken about that. To begin with, we eliminate all air drums and ammunition dumps. We do? Yes. Because the sergeant assured me that they would be struck. Another one of his stupid lies. We eliminate further all those targets not suited for low-level attacks, because those flyers are specialists in that kind of work. And we consider only those targets of first-rate importance, only those which resemble Strassline, industrial targets. Else, why have those particular experts along? Industrial targets in crowded areas. That narrows it, eh? Cities. Sofia, Belgrad, Bucharest, Budapest, Vienna, Munich, Lyon. <laughs> yes, that narrows it. Those towns are miles away from each other. We can't send messages to cover Lyon when the target may be over here. Don't worry. We'll learn where the target is. In time for that raid tomorrow? In time for that raid tomorrow. After all, Captain, we have five prisoners of war who can help us. But I understood you to say, sir, that those men themselves don't know such things. You misunderstood me. They know all right. It's simply they don't know they know. Cigarette, pal? Save that can of talk for the exercise yard. I can't. What are you 
trying to do, stop it, Dan. Come on, you're getting out of here.
Captain. Al, what's the matter? Well, they, they, they shot you. I saw them. And... What are you talking about, Al? What's happened? I'm well, sorry, but... sir, but we'll have to go. The officer's yard is on the other side. Yeah, okay. Don't let him get you, baby. Keep fighting him. You'll be okay. The guy you was telling me about? Yeah. I told you it was a phony. Hey. You really on the level about what you said about cracking out of here? Where am I? You any ideas? Yeah, a few, but it takes plenty of guts and patience. Well, that's something I'm pretty short on right now. Huh? Patience, I mean. Brother, if you ain't got patience, you're dead. You better take it easy. Look. My outfit's gonna blast these guys, and I'm gonna be in on it. I'm missing one trip as it is. Ah, relax, there'll be plenty of others just as good. Yeah, I guess you're right. That one tomorrow looked pretty good for a while, and then they sort of screwed things up. Yeah? Yeah, they took our flight commander off. What's that get to do with it? Well, in the first place, he was in there to lead us over the target. His kind of target, I guess. And, brother, it would have been a pip, whatever it was. He was one of the guys on the stress line raid. Remember, they blew those oil refineries right off the map. I saw the bomb hit pictures, and it was terrific. What do you make of that? Quiet. What do you suppose they took him off for? You got me. I guess they just decided to go after some other kind of target. I can't figure it. They know some screwy things, don't they? I don't know once when I was in Tunisia. Possible. It wouldn't make a change now. Wait, sir. We have been sound in every one of our deductions. And every one of them points to one of those three targets. Send Fredrikin immediately. He's in a prison yard with Mason. Right away, sir. We have got to find out why the flight commander was taken off. Suppose they have made a change, Major. Suppose it is some other objective than Belgrade, Munich, or Budapest. Then we'll start all over again. Right now, I want you to have another go at Lieutenant Williams. I'll have Fredrik work on Spencer. The commander? I don't envy him his assignment. Don't worry about Freilich. He's a good man. He was quite satisfactory with Mason. But Captain Spencer is quite a different matter, sir. You have to be much more than satisfactory with him. Ah, nice shot, Captain. He's a game room in a prison camp. How do you like that? <laughs> you don't think this is gonna last, do you, Lieutenant? Not gonna last? What do you mean? Just that. No, no, this is all dressing. Like a stage set. As soon as they've got as much out of us as they think they can get, out. Transferred to the barbed wire encampments with a dirt floor barracks. Are you kidding me? No, that's the deal. You know what they say, don't you? If you run into a guy that's been here longer than a couple of weeks, look out for him. He's either a talker or a worker. Jeez. I hate to leave a soft spot like this. I was almost able to forget about Brooklyn, too. Boy, what I wouldn't give for a good look at Ebbets Field right now. Where are you from, Captain? I'm from St. Louis. Oh, really? One of my best pals is from there. He's near court, too. Maybe you know him. Tommy Carson? Carson? No, I don't think so. But then the Air Force is a pretty good-sized outfit, you know. Yeah. He's a tall fella, black hair. He's in a medium bomber group around uh, Naples, I think. Are you sure of that? Yeah. That's the way I understand it, anyway. I got a letter from him the other day, just before they nailed him. As a matter of fact, I wouldn't be a bit surprised if he was going on that... Uh, on that raid. Raid? What raid? We heard about it up around Casino. I was with Clark's fifth, you know. Seems he was gonna send a, uh, a flock of 99s over uh, Budapest, I think. Budapest? I think you're right. Oh, then you know about it? Well, I should. That's my outfit, you know. Oh, really? Well, that explains those new planes they got in. New planes? Yeah, the new rocket ship, the Flash Gordon 52. Oh, yeah. Say, uh, that really must be uh, quite a plane, huh? Oh, quite a plane. With those 12 disintegrator guns and the magnetic arc underneath? The magnetic... Yeah, which they don't even need with that new electric paralysis ray. I tell you, there won't be a thing left of Budapest. No, no, I guess you're right. Say, Captain, I'm terribly sorry. I'm 20 minutes late for a doctor's appointment right now. Can I get a rain check on this? Oh, sure thing, Lieutenant. We'll pick it up again. There'll be plenty of time. Well, thanks a lot. See you later. Right. All the comforts of home, Captain, thanks to you. Not another thing I could ask for. Except an indefinite leave of absence, huh? <laughs> yeah, I could go over that all right. Now, your flight commander, there's a lucky guy. Spencer tells me he got a leave. Oh, yeah. Thanks. But I'm looking for something a little more substantial. What can you do with a week? Uh, 
a bit under the weather, was he? Looked okay to me. Spencer knows him better than I do, though. He and Johnson were close pals. Mm, kind of funny he's leaving, isn't it? Well, right at this time, I mean. This time? Well, as you explained, he's pretty much of an expert at the kind of bombing you were doing. Oh. The other Strauss line men, were they also given leaves? I don't know. But you must have some idea. Well, I... This is a different kind of conversation than we've been having, isn't it, Captain? I guess it is. I haven't any more time to waste on it. Wait, Budapest, Munich. It must be one of those three. It must be. Yes, that's the way it added up as long as we included the Strassland pilot. But he's out now. We have got to find out why. I'm sure that if we knew the answer to that, we'd know the target. So then Spencer's your man. In fact, he's your only man. Of all those boys in the crew, he's the only one who knows Johnson well. And the least likely to talk. Unless, of course, it's about rocket ships or paralysis rays. He will talk, Captain Greenish. He will discuss what we want him to discuss. You see, we have one very decided advantage. Spencer doesn't know that we know anything whatever about his bombardment group. And as a matter of fact, we know more about that group than Spencer himself does right now. Jawohl. Die Unternehmung ist für morgen angesetzt. Aber das Geschäft mit dem Kommandanten, das ist sehr recht zu machen. Gentlemen, excuse me, we have a guest. Ausgezeichnet, eine Ehre in Bayern zu haben. In English, if you don't mind, Carl. I assure the captain he'd find the food in here quite a bit better. But Major, may I present Captain Spencer, Major Franz Komer, Major Captain, captain Bolwig, Lieutenant Lieutenant Marx. This is the captain with the Flash Gordon 52, the paralysis ray. <laughs> My congratulations, sir. We are sorry about that, Captain. Won't you please? Thank you. I think we should explain to Captain Spencer that we are not attached here, thank God. Yes. This room is for the convenience of Luftwaffe officers, Captain, when they happen to be passing through. The Major is from the Luftwaffe field near Turin, and Lieutenant von Terpitz is from the Heinkel factory in Frankfurt. We are paying the B-99, I understand, Captain. That's right. 360 miles an hour. Is that really true? We shall have none of that, Marx. The running is right. Of course. I meant no harm. The captain's had sufficient questioning for one day. Your health, sir. If I may be permitted one single question. Does the captain understand German? Uh, Auf Wiedersehen and Gesundheit. And not another word, Major. Ah, that's good. You see, just as you entered, the Major was telling us of his group's plan to bomb your munition dumps above Naples. Well, I'm afraid there's not much I can do right now to interfere with anybody's plan. Major Comer was telling us, Ruling, about his commander who planned tomorrow's mission. Best fly in our organization, I might add. And uh, quite suddenly this morning, just one day before the mission, he was relieved of his command. I can tell you that our flyers are very upset. They are not sure, but that the move will alter the entire mission. I can imagine. What was the explanation? None. None at all. It is very strange. Well, you'll find the man became ill. I'm sure it's as simple as that. But it is not. Captain Reining, I saw the commander myself only this morning. He seemed in perfect health. He seemed in perfect health, but uh, you can't always be sure, can you? Some more wine, Captain. All I can tell you is he left for Berlin on a week's leave. A holiday, as I understand it. Then you must be right, Major. After all, one does not have much of a holiday when one is too ill to fly. Oh, I don't know, Captain. A few sneezes never interfered with anybody's holiday. Sneezes? Sneezes? Well, the man probably had a slight head cold. That's what happened to a pal of mine. Same setup exactly. Oh, what a fool. Not only left my files and locked them to my office as well. Major von Benson will have my eye. Excuse me a moment, Captain. You'll see that our guest has everything he needs. I shan't be long. Light hit cold. And that's the reason he was taken off the mission. But he was vital to that mission, Captain. Is it likely he'd be removed on account of a slight head cold? My friend, a pilot with only a slight head cold is unable to use an oxygen mask. I should think you know that. I do. But I also know that the pilot would not be using an oxygen mask except for high altitude flying. Tomorrow's mission, Captain Röning, is a low-level affair. A low-level bombing mission. A low-level bombing mission, yes. But low level all the way? All the way? You see, Captain Greenish, sometimes even low level missions have to climb upstairs. 
sometimes there are mountain ranges to be crossed. Mountains? Of course. None here, Captain. No important mountain ranges are route to Belgrade. Or there, on the way to Budapest. But Munich. Yes, Captain. That is something else. For in order to come in low over the Hermann Göring oil refinery, one first must fly high, quite high, above the Austrian Alps. And we shall be ready for the gentlemen. Thanks to our good friend Spencer. Fliegerkorps, Menschen, Grammajor von Ranke. We shall be ready for them, gentlemen. Chance. The worst thing would have been three outside. We didn't know what hit us. Really murdered. But in the morning, That's right. Bombs landed squarely on the target, on the right wing of the building. And you're positive it was the refiner? Yeah. Robbie here got a good look at it as we passed over. The flames just, just exploded in the air. Okay. Well, uh, what about interception? You mean you don't know? I have to get it firsthand from you. They met us just south of Munich. About here. About 10 or 15 minutes before we hit our IP. There were Messerschmitts all over the place. 
In a second, more than I've ever seen. About eight of them jumped Maxwell and Thomas. Max was able to pull up, and we saw some of his men bail out, but Thomas... It was like that. Fighters and flak all the way to the target. It kept getting smaller and smaller. Smith got it. Wilkerson, Marion, and Dale, Montgomery, Reynolds, God knows how many others. They were guys that we lived with. Guys that were here this morning. 105 of them missing in action. 21 planes lost or destroyed. That's the last count. There was a tip-off. There had to be a tip-off. Oh, how could there be? There wasn't anyone in this outfit who could have reached the Jerry's, who could have talked to them. We've all been... We lost a crew to the Jerry's just the other day. Listen, there wasn't a better bunch of guys anywhere than Spencer's crew. If you think they talk, you're nuts. Somebody talked. If it wasn't one of them, who was it? You tell me. Wait a minute. Listen, it couldn't have been one of them. What could they possibly say anyhow? If we didn't know where we were going or when or how until this morning, how could they know three days ago? You don't have to know when or where or how. You can still tell the enemy all he needs to know. You don't even have to be a traitor, although you might just as well be. All you have to do is relax, just for one instant. All you have to do is talk. Give anything but your name, your rank, and your serial number. Remember, if and when you're captured, the enemy will search you for any scrap of information they can use. Don't forget, they've got a head start on you. From American newspapers and magazine clippings and data collected from other prisoners of war. The enemy is watching you every minute. If you talk to show how much you know, you show how little you know. Common sense ought to tell you that. Nobody in the enemy camp is your friend. They've been taught to hate you, and they do. But no matter how much they hate you, no matter how much they try to break you down, they won't hurt you. Because we have prisoners too, their men, and they know what reprisals mean. No, the only thing you have to fear is fear itself. Don't try to be clever, don't try to deceive, because he's a master at the game of deceit. Even your lies have value. Trust nothing you hear, and nothing you see. Those bogus props, those thoughtful fixtures that appeal so much to the heart. Forget them. They're as phony and impermanent as that fine, friendly room. That's only a way station for real prison quarters. No. Trust nothing you see, and no one you meet. Trust nothing. Not even the walls in your room. Not even the tree in the yard. And don't talk. Don't talk. For one single slip. One nod. One quick lift of the head. Or two or three words on any subject at all. Can give them the one final fact of the case. The one final fact that gives them all they need. Spells loss for your cause and your country and writes finish for your comrades in arms. Yes, one word can give you a place of prominence in the gallery of Friends of the Reich. Now what happened to Spencer's crew might happen to any one of you. Next month, next week, or tomorrow. And if it does, I want you to remember one thing. Even though you're prisoners of war, you're still American soldiers. You're still in a fight to win. You talk, and you add to the enemy's knowledge. You, you supply him with newfound strength. You equip him with the power to kill. Say nothing, and you win a major victory. Sure, that's right. Merely by remaining quiet, you might be playing a greater part in this war ever played before. You captured by the fighter in the enemy camp. And you conquer by keeping quiet. Your name, your rank, your serial number. Nothing more. And don't talk. Don't talk. Don't talk.